Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is one of the most disruptive defensive linemen in the NFL. He was voted to his fourth Pro Bowl this season and is once again a nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. From the Tennessee Titans, Jarrell Casey is here. Thanks hey, for coming in. Appreciate you having me today. So let's start about, I mean, your leg. I, I see it <laughs> sticking out straight, so we just got to address that right away. Titan season comes down to the very end. Last game, you strained your MCL. How hard was that to watch from the sidelines? Definitely was a bummer. I think, you know, for me personally, it was probably one of the hardest times of my career. You know, I never really dealt with a major injury. Uh, really didn't know how to deal with this one going when it, when it happened. I'm really shook it. Got home, I literally cried probably for the last three or four days when it happened. And really just my mind, trying to wrap my mind around how am I going to bounce back? Is it really serious? Is it not? And, you know, just thank the Lord that when everything came, came all over and cleared up, it was a minor MCL t um, uh, sprain. I didn't tear anything. I didn't have to have surgery. And it definitely was a blessing. But going to that last game was definitely difficult because it was a strong, strong season for me. And to finish the way I had to finish and had to really suck more pain into the knee knowing that, oh. you know, I couldn't be out there to help the guys and do what I can do to, you know, get us into the playoffs. There's something cool that happened the year before in the playoffs. Someone who noticed how great you were, Bill Belichick. Uh, it is rare to get a compliment from Bill Belichick, but you did. What did he say to you after the game? Unbelievable. Just, you know, I'm just going up to him like a regular player. Hey, coach, great game. And sure enough, he, he recognized who I am coming up to him. He, Casey, man, I just want to say you heck of a player. Um, you know, you unbelievable enjoy playing against you. And when you get a coach to they say high things like that, especially Belichick, someone that yeah. everybody knows, he's a hard nosed coach. He he's a guy who who don't show no slack. He don't care. He ain't really giving too much players. You know, I wouldn't say he don't give you the respect, but he's not gonna boost you up as much. No. You know, he's gonna say enough to you know show you know he got respect for you, but he's not gonna hype you up. And for a coach to you know say it out of his mouth straight to you, someone that been winning that many championships, somebody you know who you probably don't even think pay attention to that much, he just Tell his team, hey, go beat the Titans. They don't worry about them. <laughs> um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it just shows how hard I've been working, showing the things I've been putting into this game. And, you know, coaches like him, just showing every day, you know, I get a coach coming out their game or I get somebody from another team telling me, hey, my coach been doing this. They looking at you here. So it's just keep me going, keep me motivated, keep on going. So, like you said, definitely a bigger chip going into this next season to get ready for another one. You are such an impactful player. You're consistent. Do you ever feel like maybe you're underappreciated or overlooked because you are playing in a smaller market? That's always the case. Um, yeah. I would say in the bigger scheme of the market, yes. Everybody, the, the mainstream market, nobody really knows me. But when I say within the shield, within, within the NFL, everybody knows who Jarrell Casey is. But, you know, the, the media and the outside attention will come as long as I keep on playing, as long as I keep on performing, all that will come, as it has been doing the last couple of years. It's just, you know, in a smaller market, it's just hard to get that attention. Well, I think when, when people do see you and you get some attention, it's your sacks. You have a great ability to sack guys. Uh, and you have a certain celebration that you do when you do this. Um, can, you, can you just yes, remind I can. people what that Everybody loves looks this. Like? Everybody loves this. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what it is, but I call it, I call it toe tag body bag. So the toe tag I, body bag. Toe okay. tagging them and body bagging them. Okay. So when I'm getting a quarterback, my whole thing is I'm murdering the quarterback. I like to hit him as hard as I can. Okay. If it was up to me, the little soft rule, I'd be driving to the ground every time. Oh, you time. don't like that rule anymore. I don't like that rule at all. Okay. So what I do is I toe tag them. So I pick the toe tag, oh, gosh. zip them up. <laughs> Oh and I salute to my people and let them know, hey, we just body bagged them. Oh so gosh. let me do that one more time for you. Thank so, you. Toe tag. Yep. Zip them up. Zip them up. And oh, the body wow. bag. Have you and ever, that's how you hit them. Have you ever had anyone say, you know, that's a little graphic? I, you know, actually, come, when I first explained it one time over the radio, they actually said that. They said it was a little graphic, but Jerome Casey do not care. <laughs> not at all, man. I just, you know, the game is graphic. The game is violent. And at the end of the day, you know, that's not who I am off the field. Yeah. Just when I'm on that field, it's another character that come out. And, you know, I got to let it be seen. I'm actually surprised by the way the NFL, like, lets you keep doing it, considering what they call it. Like, Antonio Brown can't twerk. Yeah. But you can put someone in a body bag. Listen, I defend the twerking. <laughs> twerk all day. I just, good for you for getting away with it. You got a quarterback nemesis? Oh, biggest. What biggest is guy is Andrew Luck, as I've already been talking about him. Andrew as Luck. Everybody's up, man. It just, I, for some reason, just that guy, that dude got a freaking thorn in my... <laughs> and it just, it's just, you know, I can't, I can't get it out. And at, at this point right now, like I said, after the end of that season, that will kind of like hit me the hardest. It was like knowing I'm going against them, knowing 
we fighting for everything, and I couldn't go out there and, you know, play one more time and, and lead, lead that matchup again. I don't know who would have won that matchup. That's the part that sucks. And at the end of, at the, end of the day, um, getting ready for them again next season. We got them two times next year, and it's definitely going to be a good fight. So they're getting better, and we're getting better. So the AFC South coming for a storm. Who's your favorite quarterback to sack? Favorite quarterback to sack? Uh, I'm going to have to say my guy Bortles. I think... <laughs> Everybody knows I don't like the Jaguars. Okay. I, I pretty much hate them. And explain you know, to me why again. Just they, they they talk so much and they're not good. And you know it's just part of it. As we can see, they unfolded this season and it was really rough for them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they, this, like, for some reason on your they face. for some reason they hype this guy up so much. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't do well for them. And. I'm going to leave it at that for right now. You were selected to your fourth Pro Bowl. When those guys get together, the conversations that must happen between you guys, I would love to be a fly on the wall. Um, do you have a very memorable or interesting conversation from when you guys were all together? I had to say probably my first, my first Pro Bowl. That was probably the most exciting, the best experience I probably ever had. Because you come into the Pro Bowl, you see all these great players. And for me personally, I know who every one of them is. I didn't watch them, I didn't see them. And like, I'm like, dang, this is Joe McCoy. This is, this is um, Calais Campbell. This is Geno Atkins. And like, when they see me, they look at you and like, honestly, you don't, when before, I would say now I'm transformed. But before I was a little bit bigger, a little bit sloppier body, didn't really carry myself well. And literally guys would be like, who is this guy right here? Like, and I come on, I'm Joe Casey. Oh, and, and, I remember. Oh, that's you, 99? Nah, I just can't, you, you, this little guy, this big slop, like, uh. and so, like, to me personally, like, after they found out who I was, like, they understood who I was. They knew who the game, what, they knew what type of game I played. They respect my game. They watched me. They could tell me what I do. Mm -hmm. So, to me personally, like I was saying, like, to the outside world, people would probably not pay attention. But everybody in the NFL, they pay attention to it. And so, for me to go up in there and think they don't know who I am, but... They actually do know who you are. They just didn't know the face. Sure. And that, that's just everything. Like, they watched me play. They knew exactly how I get down. It's just they didn't know who it was. And now everybody knows me everywhere I go. Like, I didn't put a name with the face. And now I get the love that I deserve.